I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com or phone us at 604-924-5504. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me. As we just said off air, one place in the U.S. that the current Korean missiles could hit, the North Korean missiles could hit, is Hawaii. And that's where you are. Yeah, unfortunately, that's where uh, I am. And if this thing were to spiral into a full-on war with Russia and China, obviously with Pearl Harbor right out this window, we got a ringside seat for any mushroom clouds that are coming on in. Now, the good news is the North Korean nukes are so weak uh, that if they hit Pearl Harbor, we'll have a nice picture of the mushroom cloud. But the Russian and, the Chi- and especially the Chinese nukes, uh, we probably wouldn't even feel anything that hit. They use hydrogen bombs, right? Yes, they do. Multi-stage thermonuclear weapons. Now, how much of the propaganda about North Korea is real? Is he a nut bar, or is he very clever and it's a good strategy? Well, everything we think we know about North Korea and Kim Jong-un is coming to us from the very same people who told us Saddam Hussein had nuclear weapons. And... Uh, if you analyze North Korea's military, uh, it quickly becomes evident that it's based on a doctrine of defense. Uh, they've got lots of tunnels, lots of holes. Uh, they are not mobile. Uh, they don't have a real invasionary force. Uh, and at this point, with the rogue United States uh, invading country after country that doesn't have uh, nuclear weapons to deter invasion... Uh, I think any country uh, is going to be thinking about either building or buying nuclear weapons uh, to discourage an attack. Because if you look at all the countries the United States has invaded, drone struck, regime changed over the last 16 years, the one common factor is they're all nations that can't strike back. They're, they're, the U.S. is beating up on these countries that don't have the ability uh, to deter an invasion. And that's really what this big stink about weapons of mass destruction in places like North Korea and Iran is. Uh, The United States doesn't want them to be able to resist an eventual invasion. What's the latest on the U.S. missile attack on Syria? Well, at this point, uh, everyone's pretty much understanding that it was a war crime. Uh, The claim that Assad gassed his own people uh, was nonsensical on the face of it. Uh, Assad was on the verge of defeating the U.S. backed terrorists. There were peace talks just starting that would have guaranteed the continuance of his government in Syria. Even the White House had said, yeah, it looks like he's going to stay. And so now they're saying that Assad, for no reason at all, used chemical weapons that nobody can prove he has to attack civilians in a target of zero military significance, doing the one thing, crossing the one red line that would allow Donald Trump to launch an attack. And the attack proved to be very expensive but very ineffective. Of the 59 cruise missiles launched, only 23 hit the base. Most of them didn't cause that much damage. The base was back in operation in less than 24 hours. Some of those missiles that missed the base are known to have hit uh, nearby villages, killing more civilians and children. Uh, And and so, uh, you know, Russia's out there saying we need an independent investigation about Idlib. We have the U.S. government saying, we don't need an investigation. We have proof. It's classified. We can't show it to you. Just take our word for it. But after the lies about Saddam Hussein, nobody should take the U.S. government's word for anything, especially when you remember that the U.S. tried to claim Assad gassed his own people in 2013 and 2014, and in both cases the United Nations chemical weapons inspectors said, no, it was the U.S.-backed rebels who were carrying out these attacks to frame uh, uh, Assad. Is it true that Trump is actually allowing more Syrian refugees than Obama did? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, that's another one of his campaign promises he's gone back on. Uh, and at this point, I, I, Trump is an incredible disappointment. 
Uh, and I'm willing to admit I was wrong to back him with the caveat that the reason I was backing Donald Trump was to keep Hillary Clinton out of the White House because if Hillary had won the presidency, I think the mushroom clouds would be sprouting already. Uh, but I think Donald Trump is going to be a one-term president, uh, and, and the, at the rate they're going up against Russia and China, uh, we might not even have elections in 2020. Uh, because I, I do not see the United States being able to win a war against all these different countries uh, that we're fighting against. And if you look at the quagmires, places like Afghanistan and Iraq and Yemen and Libya and Syria have become, we can't even press forward against these very weak countries to a resolution. What are we going to do when we're up against Russia and China? With all this militarization going on, didn't he speak out? Going back to the old American philosophy, no foreign entanglements? Well, he had campaigned on that. He'd campaigned on pulling back from the war, and a lot of his supporters voted him into office in the hope that we were going to derail this rush to World War III, and now we still have it. Uh, Trump has been compromised or controlled somehow. Uh, Some people are saying the Pentagon is simply ignoring him and doing what they want to do, such as the Moab bomb into Afghanistan. That was not authorized by the White House. Uh, There's a rumor going around Washington, D.C. that uh, apparently Donald Trump, when he was down on Jeff Epstein's little pleasure island in the Caribbean, uh, they got a videotape of him doing something really icky, uh, and they're threatening to release that and destroy his presidency. So basically, Donald Trump has been given a message by the Pentagon, by Congress, by the deep state, the war agenda is moving forward. All you can choose is whether you will still be president or not. Because if you don't go along with the war agenda, we will destroy you. We will get you out with the 25th Amendment. We'll get you impeached. Or push come to shove, uh, you know, they'll they'll just assassinate him. I'm sure at some point uh, they've shown Donald Trump the uh, Zapruder film from Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas, and said, look, we can get away with killing a president who's not being cooperative. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after this. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp., RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Rideout Shear Zone in Ontario. With grab samples running as high as 32 grams per tonne gold, a drill program will commence this spring to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork. For more information, visit our website, rmroyalty.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, some people considered Trump to be the peace president, and now it looks like he's trying to be the policeman of the world. Is he? Well, he's certainly gone from being a peace president to a war president, and a lot of people are very angry about that. Uh, the concern is that with all of these wars going on in all these different areas, and apparently the U.S. is sending troops into Somalia, and now talking about taking on Islamabad, it, it just feels like they've lost control of the war agenda, uh, that it is spinning out of control. And, uh, I mean, they're openly talking about nuclear attacks uh, on North Korea. And North Korea, of course, is talking about nuclear retaliation. So this thing is just, it's just wildly out of control. And our state government is now actively creating an emergency plan uh, to deal with an attack by North Korea should it happen. Well, we know right now they don't really have the missile capability to deliver a nuke, but they could use a suicide bomber or put it on a truck or put it on the back of a donkey. Well, they could weld a nuclear bomb to the skegs of a cargo ship, and the advantage there is 18 feet of seawater shields radiation as effectively as a foot of lead, and so uh, NIST would not be able to find it. But the wild card in all of this is North Korea has launched at least one, possibly two, of their new Sinpo-class submarine, uh, which has vertical launch tubes in the sail that can launch nuclear-tipped missiles with a 500-mile range. So uh, uh, North Korea doesn't need to launch an attack on Hawaii from North Korea. Uh, 
it, they could have that submarine pretty much anywhere uh, and launch an attack using that. And that's the real danger. Uh, following the end of the, uh, the, the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, the uh, U.S. government shut down what was called the SOSIS net, uh, which was the network of sensors on the ocean floor to track submarines. And they've been replaced by a fleet of these converted tuna boats called the Surtas boats. Uh, but there are large gaps uh, in terms of being able to find uh, submarines in the Pacific, even ones as noisy as the North Korean submarines are. And again, what's to stop them from just sailing the sub right into Pearl Harbor and detonating it? Well, they <clears throat> that I think would be a little bit more difficult uh, because there uh, there are anti-submarine measures guarding Pearl Harbor itself. Uh, but if if they can launch a missile from the Sinpo class from 500 miles out, uh, they'd be in international waters. And uh, again. At this point, anything is possible. Obviously, it's very nerve-wracking for those of us here in Hawaii uh, uh, to be dealing with all of this. Or again, that sub could be just off L.A., San Francisco, San Diego, Seattle, or Vancouver. I think it would have a much harder time getting there because it's not a nuclear-powered submarine. Uh, it is uh, a, a diesel-electric, uh, and that means it has to have a surface tender, and the surface tender is a dead giveaway uh, to satellites, and there are uh, sonar sensors along the west coast, and there are a few around Hawaii, uh, but it's going to be a lot easier for them to get here to Hawaii uh, or to Guam uh, or Japan than it would be to get to the west coast. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're chatting with Michael Rivero. Michael, are we actually getting closer to World War III, you think? Well, in my opinion, we've actually been in World War III for quite some time. We're just looking for a big bang where everybody wakes up and says, yes, it's a world war. But I want to go back to North Korea, and I want to emphasize something. Uh, North Korea is not going to initiate any kind of an attack without provocation. Uh, they're going to strike back if they're attacked. They keep saying that again and again. Uh, if the U.S. attacks us, we will strike back. Uh, North Korea knows better than to attack the United States without a good reason because of the inevitable retaliation. Uh, right now, the U.S. Uh, is deploying three aircraft carrier groups off the coast of North Korea. There are also now Russian and Chinese ships shadowing the U.S. armada. And uh, unfortunately, one of the ships the U.S. has deployed is called an SSGN, and it's an old converted uh, Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine. Uh, because of arms limitations talk, uh, the U.S. had four Ohio-class Trident missile submarines that couldn't be allowed to carry Tridents anymore. So what they've done with these four ships is inside the missile tube for the Trident, they put a launching rack that carries seven Tomahawk missiles. And two of those Trident tubes have been diverted for other purposes, leaving 22 or 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles carried by this one platform. And each of those cruise missiles could have a nuclear weapon. And we could see the U.S. haul off and drop a nuclear weapon on North Korea's nuclear sites and say, oh, well, <clears throat> the, the radiation is from North Korea's weapon stockpile, not us. Why did North Korea's last missile launch fail? There are, there have been rumors for quite some time that the uh, NSA has succeeded in hacking into the North Korea's uh, computer networks, uh, and they're basically sabotaging the missiles uh, inside the software. North Korea, unfortunately, is not that sophisticated uh, in terms of computers. They have a very small national Internet, uh, and they are way behind the times in a lot of their technology. Uh, that being said, my impression of the North Korean launchers is uh, they're far too uh, they're they're too long and thin and that means the stresses on the joints during staging could easily e exceed the material strength there 
so the issues of cyber attack aside, uh, it, it looks to me like there's actually a design flaw. Somebody just decided it was going to look cooler if it was narrow and longer uh, and, and less wind resistance and faster speed. Uh, but I, I think it may uh, be producing too much stress during staging. Why is CIA Director Mike Pompeo demonizing WikiLeaks? Well, we're starting to see a general demonization of uh, whistleblowers, WikiLeaks, uh, all of the independent media. Uh, they're all out there trying to say we're all working for Russian intelligence uh, because we're out here uh, calling out the lies of the U.S. government, such as the fact that Assad really did not have a motive for this gas attack on Idlib. It benefited the U.S.-backed rebels. It benefited the U.S. war machine. There was absolutely no upside for Assad himself. And we're pointing that out to people, and people are saying, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to say Assad did this, and that's why the government is very angry with us all. Are there concerns about election fraud in the upcoming election in France? Uh, absolutely there are. Apparently, they're claiming it's a computer glitch, but apparently a half million ballots, extra ballots, duplicate ballots, have been sent out uh, to people who are planning to vote against Marine Le Pen, and that half million is enough to steal the election away from her. And apparently there is no mechanism in the French election system uh, to screen out duplicate votes coming from individuals. Does Obamagate now involve the U.K. and Germany? Yes, it does, because it turns out that Obama was using uh, the British intelligence service GCHQ to surveil Donald Trump and his campaign. Uh, because of the Five Eyes Agreement, uh, Great Britain, GCHQ, has unfiltered access to all the NSA's wiretap, phone tap data. And so Obama went outside to GCHQ in order to have deniability and no American fingerprints on this. Is that why, uh, I forget the name of the five countries, the UK, New Zealand, Australia, the US, Canada, take turns spying on each other so they can claim we don't spy on our own citizens? Absolutely, and they've been doing it ever since the early days uh, uh, in the 1980s, uh, where the Five Eyes went by the name Echelon. Is Jared Kushner a globalist, and is there any truth to the rumors that Trump will replace Bannon with Kushner? Uh, Kushner is a globalist. He's also a war hawk. Uh, he's very much in favor of more U.S. wars across the Middle East. And uh, somebody commented on my show that Kushner appears to be Trump's Rasputin, uh, which is an insult to Rasputin, in my opinion. But yes, Bannon is being forced out, and it's important to remember, Bannon was the only voice on Trump's team that said the cruise missile attack into Syria was a bad idea, and it was not going to go over very well with the rest of the world. Why does the University of Berkeley continue to be the epicenter of protest? Uh, it, I'm not sure. One thing that came on out, though, is that apparently the uh, campus police and the Berkeley police are just standing back and letting it happen. Uh, and there were riots again today. Now, the corporate media is saying it's all about whether or not Donald Trump is going to release his complete long-form tax returns from the past. Uh, but over the weekend, there was another story where liberals uh, were organizing uh, to not f send in their tax forms and tax checks uh, in protest against the, the Trump government. And I'm hearing there are a lot of conservatives who are saying the same thing, because why should we pay for not getting the government we voted for? And the primary issue is the war policy. Uh, people supported Donald Trump to try and derail this rush to a new world war, and we're still on the path to the new world war. In Canada, the government says it's going to legalize pot sales, but if you take a look at the laws around it, right now if you sell tobacco or to or alcohol to a minor, the penalties are small fines. Under the proposed legislation, it's 14 years in jail if, I, if somebody sells pot to a 17-year-old. Is this really legalization? Well, I, I think you might want to say it's more uh, decriminalization, uh, but you need to understand that uh, it is the alcohol and tobacco industries that are doing the pushback against uh, decriminalizing marijuana because it cuts into their profits. Uh, in uh, states here in the U.S. that have decriminalized marijuana, 
uh, the, the beer uh, sales have plummeted. People would rather smoke marijuana uh, than drink beer. Uh, and even in the states where it's decriminalized, you're still required to buy it from a state-owned tax store. It's still a crime to grow it in your own backyard. Airlines and other corporations versus paying customers are paying customers avoiding doing business with corporations that treat people badly. Well, they should be if they aren't already. And this debacle uh, regarding United Airlines, uh, they, uh, they they seem to be just going along with this attitude. There was the, the, the Chinese doctor who was dragged out of the aircraft uh, to make way for a United Airlines staffer. Uh, and uh, th- then there was that problem with the Scorpion. Another guy got kicked off the plane. And apparently earlier today, on a half-empty flight, uh, there was a couple that was flying to their wedding and they decided to change seats because they wanted to leave a completely empty row of seats for one of the passengers wanted to stretch out and get a nap. So they just figured, we'll just change seats and you can stretch out. Uh, and they got thrown off the airplane for that. So, uh, yeah, there, there is this corporate attitude of, uh, you know, you're here to give us money and uh, just do what we tell you. Bill O'Reilly is suddenly on vacation from Fox News and has not made a public apology. Are we likely to see more women coming out with allegations against O'Reilly? It's entirely possible. Uh, I, many times it appears that Bill O'Reilly has let his fame uh, get to his head. And uh, uh, again, nothing new. We're looking at uh, all the allegations that were coming out of Fox in general uh, about this this corporate culture uh, that saw the females in, uh, in in the news programs just as kind of a, a fishing pool, if you will. Well, I almost thought it was a policy written in stone at Fox News that all the announcers had to be blonde, including Afro-American announcers. That's what I saw in Britain anyway. Well, I've, I've got a photo that I put together uh, of all the Fox News talking heads, and yeah, the overwhelming majority of them are very bodacious blonde girls, and I captioned the photo, Diversity over at Fox News. Our Facebook and Google attempting to promote mainstream media by banning what they consider to be fake news while continuing to display Trump and his supporters in a bad light. Uh, yeah, they are doing that, I'm afraid. Facebook and Google and some of these established social media are being turned into branches of the controlled corporate media uh, they're, they're denying ad revenues to alternative news sites, independent news sites, uh, and they have added this feature where readers can push a button saying, I think this is fake news, and the story will get downgraded. The problem with that is if you run a story uh, about some politician's corruption, uh, that politician can hire a public relations firm that will send a few hundred people over to the page, hit the button, and get the story downplayed. So it's not really providing fake news in point of fact it's being it's a tool to hide the real news what is the car loan bubble of 2017 and what does it mean for the auto industry well the auto industry is in serious serious trouble all of retail is in trouble the whole consumer economy is in trouble because we just don't have any money out here it's all been sucked up concentrated at the top and uh if you look at car prices right now for anybody who's actually got money it's a great time to uh, buy a new car and what they're doing is they're they've gone to subprime auto loans uh having learned nothing from the subprime mortgages of 2008 and so they've got this huge bubble of car loans out there many of which are already delinquent and on the verge of uh default and we're going to see a repeat of 2008 only it's going to be auto loans instead of mortgages why is trump being sued by a miami paint store uh, apparently there was a dispute where the uh, uh, Trump doesn't think they, they did the job that he contracted them to do and he refused to, paint the, to pay them, and they're now suing him uh, uh, for breach of contract. Bernie Sanders, does he had, have a chance to becoming the leader of the Democrats, and would he have a shot again at president? Uh, it is rather interesting to see, with the fall of Hillary Clinton, uh, the Democratic leadership that had been on uh, her side, uh, even against Bernie Sanders, all of a sudden they're welcoming him back because they're realizing that uh, the, the image, the brand of the Democratic Party uh, was destroyed along with Hillary last year, and they're hoping that Bernie Sanders, who did have a huge popularity, uh, can come back into a leadership position 
and help redefine uh, the Democratic Party, help rebuild the brand, uh, find its identity. And yes, there's a chance he may run in 2020. Uh, and frankly, if he runs in 2020, or if Tulsi Gabbard were to be the nominee in 2020, uh, I would support them. Uh, Trump has become a hideous disappointment. The only way I would support Donald Trump in 2020 is if Hillary ran again. Who's Tulsi Gabbard? Tulsi, oh, Tulsi Gabbard is a, uh, a member of the House of Representatives from right here on Oahu. She's the lady who went on over to uh, Syria and met with Assad to talk to him. She got criticized for that. She was uh, the, the one person who stood up and said, I don't think that we should move on Syria until we know that Assad gassed those people at Idlib. She stood up there and said, I doubt the story. It doesn't make sense. And she was roundly attacked by Democrats. They were talking about trying to find some way to kick her out of the House of Representatives. Uh, but she's very much her own woman, and uh, I think she's very, very impressive. Michael, thank you again so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.